I'm Mel Nichols. Um, I graduated in 72 from uh, BYU, Civil Engineering Department. And I have, these are my two sons, Dan, Dan Nichols and Luke Nichols. Um, Dan, Dan also uh, got a bachelor's and master's from BYU and has still working here in Civil Engineering. And uh, Luke spent a lot of time in the Civil Engineering Department and then went over to Political Science and then went and got a law degree and now is a YouTuber. Did I get that right? Yeah, more, that I think that's right. an interesting thing. I've been retired for 17 years. Um, I essentially worked all of my career here in Alaska and that's pretty much what Dan has too. Yeah, after graduating from BYU in 2005, I went and got a law degree and practiced criminal defense law for 11 years and then started uh, doing uh, fishing and outdoor adventure YouTube videos. And I've been a professional YouTuber for about 10 and a half years now. Let's see, I uh, graduated in 2002 with uh, a master's and a, a undergrad in civil engineering at the same time through the BYU's uh, integrated master's program. Uh, it was a real big help for me getting my master's. Um, then I moved back up here to Alaska um, uh, and had been working as a basically a rural engineer, a rural development engineer. So I work mainly in Bush, Alaska with water, sewer, infrastructure projects in uh, remote communities. and, and uh, Which is just like working in a third world country. Essentially, I work with people that don't have water and sewer. You know, have communities that have never had a piped water system. They you still use honey buckets and and don't have landfills and that kind of stuff. And we help them uh, uh, build their community. I think an engineering degree is one of the most flexible things that you can get, and you can do just about anything with it. And uh, you know, I certainly worked as a civil engineer, but frankly, I was far a better businessman than I was a civil engineer. And that was really what. Or my, what my background developed into. Um, as you heard from Luke, he wound up going to law school and then becoming a YouTuber, which is probably not a path that a lot of the civil engineering students think might happen to them. No, but or, uh, I ended up doing a lot of forensic issues in criminal defense law, and, and um, a lot of lawyers are not comfortable with math and science and cross-examining professionals, and I found that despite my poor performance as a student in engineering, it was, uh, I, I was better equipped than most lawyers in that uh, field. My wife and I were talking about projects I've worked on, and some of the fun ones I've worked on ones that kind of had big impact. And there's a small village out in um, uh, kind of the interior of Alaska called Golcana, and uh, they have about well, probably 500 people living there, and they'd never had a paved road, never had, you know, it was, you know, it would rain, it get muddy and nasty, and, we, and we had a project that we came in and, and the city had this goal and this vision of having paved roads, sidewalks, and you know, street lightings and you know, making it a real community instead of this little you know, hovel of village, you know, of buildings and stuff in a village. And, and uh, it took us a couple of years and we got you know, paved roads and drainage and street lighting and it was a really cool project. And I remember doing my final inspection and we came back in the community and we look around and there's kids skateboarding. And the whole time I've been working there, I'd never seen a kid doing anything more than kicking rocks or, you know, not outside playing and, and doing that, you know, having that a good environment. And, you know, they were just ecstatic. The dust was gone. They weren't having the health issues with dust. They had, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, that was a, a good project, uh, you know, about being able to actually see it and help a, help a community. I, I was very unique in my company because I started it at 16 years of age when, the company was two years old and I literally worked in every section of the company and that probably is not going to be anybody since that has done that but you know after about 15 years 20 years I could look back and say not a single job that I worked at in those early years putting myself through school even existed anymore <laughs> and uh, so it requires some adapt adaption and uh, so I was very early in in our business focusing on changing the model by which we we build clients so that we could gain some value out of good management and investing in technology you know engineering is one of the best things I think about engineering is teaching you how to learn 
and how to you know give you the foundations of engineering and then how going to solve at, problems. How to solve problems, how to think things through logically, and have enough of the base skills so that you can teach yourself once you get out in the field. I, from a practical standpoint. Um, BYU is really good as an engineering school about teaching communication and writing skills. And hands down, the best engineers are the ones that can write and people communicate. Skills. Yeah, it's the people skills, and BYU did a great job at that. Um, part of it was the church background with the, the missionary, you know, missionary experience, but there was a real focus among my professors to help us have those skills. Um, and uh, the other thing for me, the, the, the Really key thing for me that helped me out with school was the American Society of Civil Engineers and the um, the involvement that BYU Civil Engineering Department had with it. And even this day, I'm I'm still involved in it in a regional level. I was not a good student, <laughs> and uh, but I will tell you, and I you didn't like school, and I didn't I didn't like school, and I did not uh, do well at school. But um, I. The idea that you you don't know what you're preparing for in school is something that I firmly believe in. Like here I am, I'm a professional YouTuber. When I, I was, I think a sophomore in college, when I got my first email address, there was no social media. The internet was a, a toy that you use for chat rooms in Napster, you know? That, um, and, and so the idea that the students nowadays know what career options are available for them is foolish. Yes. The idea that you can know what you're prepared for, the only thing you can prepare for is try to be as flexible as possible. And I think one of the biggest advantages I got from my BYU education that made my career possible was how affordable it was. That I walked out of my education unburdened by large amounts of debt. And I graduated from law school in 2008, in the middle of the financial crisis. Oh, between 20 and 30% of my law school didn't get jobs in the legal profession. And I ended up having to start my own law practice straight out of law school because there were no jobs. I, you know, and I was only able to do that because when I graduated, I wasn't in heavy debt. I had money still in the bank, and that allowed me to start my law practice, which was a huge financial blessing for our family. And because I owned my own practice, I was able to start dabbling in this YouTube thing. And BYU's affordability, you know, that allows so much power to change and adapt. And I think that is more valuable than anything else. The fact that it's affordable, it, it allows the students to be able to do whatever the future holds. My wife and I were there in the late 60s and early 70s, and there was a mess on campuses all across the country. And, you know, BYU was kind of this island of safety and tranquility in a, in a sea of storm. And it still becomes that way. And, you know, the, the people I graduated with, you know, we've, we've stayed in touch with quite a few of them. We made great friends and had a, had a safe, uh, encouraging experience and I think you feel that way yeah. too. Yeah. Engineers kind of inherently are mentor oriented as a group. They're willing to share. They're nice people. They're nice people. And I, I like engineers. I mean yeah. the jokes about lawyers aren't you know too far off base well, you know but you know, engineers are great. One of the things that I see consistently as a hard thing for young people or not just young people but all people to do and they they tend to focus too much on the here and now and what's happening over the next week or two. How do I get through yeah. this problem? And you know, I always had a saying that there's nothing that's going to kill me or really hurt my business. It's not six, eight months, 12 months. It's those At months. Least, yeah. th those are the things that you really have to be concerned about. Um, and, um, and it's also where the opportunities come. And, and you have to be constantly keeping your eye down the road and not looking at your feet. That's a skill that I rarely see, even in uh, well-educated people. Church-oriented, the spiritually-oriented education at BYU helps with that. My wife and I, when we graduated, we were about as poor as it comes. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we just felt a tremendous um, appreciation and obligation to BYU for the experience that we had. And you can hear what Luke and Dan have both said about, about how grateful they are for the cost. And uh, 
keeping the cost down. And we just felt really important that it was that we can give back. And, and uh, in the about 19, early 80s, we finally were getting on our feet. And uh, every year I'd go down to the meet with the civil, chairman of the civil engineering department and give him a check for $1,000, which was a fair amount of money in 1981-82. And uh, for scholarship funds, because there really wasn't any kind of scholarship. I had a, a chairman that was had the foresight, the vision, and jumped in with it, and we started the BYU Civil Engineering Scholarship Society. They're giving out half scholarships to about a half of the upper graduate, upper division students and graduate students. And, uh, and it was a very interesting experience, and boy, I would encourage all of the civil engineering alumni to remember there's a lot of them that are getting scholarships every year, and they need to give back. Um, and remember where that money came from and, and, and help continue that out. I've always been a planner. I've always looked ahead and said, gee, what do I want to do? And, and uh, you'll hear people say that, uh, you, you know, don't make plans because life happens. And, and that's, uh, that's not something that uh, I would have subscribed to. You, you need to have plans, and then you need to be flexible as life happens, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, you know, I was working on a master's degree when I graduated, and it was a focus on structural engineering, and, and I don't think I ever did a structural <laughs> engineering problem in my entire career. And, uh, and, and you just, you know, people focus on that too much. Mm -hmm when they're in school. Now maybe, you know, if you're a highly specialized in research guy and all that sort of stuff, but just most people who are just trying to go out and earn a living, um, there's just so many opportunities and things that will happen. You need to have a plan and then you need to keep your eyes open and down the road and be flexible and recognize opportunities when they come.